Hello, hello. This is Grace Amber, and I am coming to you today with another word. I got a word for y'all today. Uh, today, I want to talk about fear and confidence, and confidence being the antidote of fear. So, I want to start off by telling y'all about a little bit about myself. When I was a little bit younger in high school, they voted me as class clown. I was the one that was always cracking jokes. I was uh, embarrassingly known for mooning people and doing all kind of crazy stuff to make people laugh. That is what I love to do. I love to make people laugh and people love for me to make them laugh. That's what I did. So when I was in high school, they voted me as a class clown. I think it was my senior year. But you know, once you get out of high school and you hit the adult world, depending on what track you choose to take for your life or maybe even what God has planned for your life, whatever your path may so be. Sometimes life can harden you. And so uh, I have this friend. Uh, I went to go see him probably about six or seven years ago. Uh, he's my friend from high school. And he was another one. He was always cracking jokes, always making people laugh. And so I came to his house. We laughed. We talked. I think we might have ate a little bit. And I remember the conversation of guns came up and I was telling him about the kind of gun I had. I told him I had a Smith & Wesson 40 in it. I was telling him about the kind of gun I had and I was asking him, did he have a gun? And he told me no. And he basically was perplexed as to why I would think that he needed a gun. And I was perplexed as to why he, as a black male, didn't think in today's time, or even at that time, today's time, whatever, at that point in time, why did he not see the importance of having a gun? So at that point in time, life had already began to harden me from high school, uh, from, from the time I graduated in 2004 all the way up until when I saw him then. And uh, when I left, I was really deep in thought. And I, I thought about it and I said, okay, well, he's confident. He has got a confidence. And he don't think that he needs weapons. And I don't know what kind of life he's been living why he doesn't see the importance of having a gun okay so fast forward i just saw him uh was it monday we went out to eat and i was so surprised he had not changed he was still the same just like he was in high school he was still laughing still joking still cracking jokes still making his voice sound whatever and i told him and i kept telling him how happy i was for him that life had not hardened him and taken that away from him. Because when I sit down with people, I'm sure that they look at me and say, okay, yeah, that's the same Amber Simmons that I remember from high school, but she ain't as funny as she used to be. She don't crack a joke as much as she used to be. She don't make us laugh quite as much as she used to. But like I said, the path that I've taken is kind of taking that away from me. And that's okay. You know, all things happen for a reason and it made me who I am today. So I'm not complaining, but I'm just stating facts. But I looked at him and I'm, and deep inside, I kind of was like, dang, look at him. He has not changed. I wish I still had that joy. I wish I could still have that, that joy, that, that, what is the word that I'm looking for? How can I describe it? I wish that I, life had not hardened me so to the point that I didn't laugh as much as I used to. And I didn't joke as much as I used to. But to contrast me and him, if you look back to the last time that I saw him some years ago, I was thinking I needed a gun and all the stuff that could happen. Well, that's basically, you summed that up, that's fear. That's living in fear. Him, on the other hand, he ain't changed since high school and he's saying, I don't need a gun. He's confident. And so when I looked at him and I looked at me and I looked at how he is today and I look at how I am, how I am today, I came to the conclusion that confidence is the antidote of fear. God has not made us to live in fear. So I'm going to read you a little bit um, from Judges 14. And it's about Samson. Everybody knows about Samson. You've all heard about Samson and his locks and uh, his strength, his God-given strength. So let me read it to you. It's um, Judges 14, and I'm going to read you verse 1 through verse 14. So Samson went down to Timnah, I hope I pronounced that correct, and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now go get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time, they were ruling over Israel. 
So Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The spirit of the Lord came upon him in power so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman and he liked her. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. In it was a swarm of bees and some honey, which he scooped out with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some and they too ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Now his father went down to see the woman and Samson made a feast there as was customary for bridegrooms. When he appeared, he was given 30 companions. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. He replied, out of the eater, something to eat out of the strong, something sweet. For three days, they could not give the answer. I'm going to read that again. He replied, out of the eater, something to eat, and out of the strong, something sweet. Okay, so basically on his way to get this woman that he liked and that he said that he had to have her, on his way he encountered a lion, and most of us know lions are known as the king of the jungle. You know that. They, they are strong. Okay, but Samson didn't run. He was confident in who he was and who God made him to be. So he slayed the lion effortlessly with his bare hands. He didn't seek weapons. He knew that he was enough in what God made him. He was not afraid. He didn't run. He faced it face forward and he slayed the lion with his bare hands based upon the confidence that he knew that God had already made him with supernatural strength. He knew that God did not give him a spirit of fear. And from his confidence, he did not let fear strip him and make him something that God never created for him to be. So in his confidence, he was able to maintain his identity. He maintained his strength and he did not allow fear to turn him into a coward. He was confident. And because he was confident, he slayed what was sent his way to destroy him. And from his victory came something sweet. And so I look at us today. We are all, a lot of us, we, we are fearful of something. There is something that we're afraid of. We might be afraid of, of losing our job. Um, with me right now, with my business, I know that the Lord is calling me to do kingdom work and I'm stepping into that. And one of the things that I, I'm not going to say I fear it, but I have, been working for myself so long that I have a anxiety of what's going to happen when I let that go. Right. But that's contrary to what God has made us to be. That's contrary to having faith. When you know better, you should do better. And God has not made us to have a spirit of fear. He wants us to be confident, stand up right and be bold. And when he tell us to do something, he wants us to do it. Right. And so my message to you today is don't let fear rob you of walking in the confidence that God has already given you. Don't let fear strip you of being bold, being courageous and being obedient and doing the things that God has called you to do. He has not made us to be fearful creatures. Each one of us, he has given gifts. Each one of us, he has granted strength. Each one of us, he has given the authority to walk boldly, to be confident. And so whatever it is that you are fearing in your life, whatever it is, whether it, whether it may be losing a relationship, whether it may be home foreclosure, whether it may be a lack of, if I let this person go, they're going to take what they are giving to me and I may lack. Whatever your fear is, I think that we should be like Samson and walk in confidence and knowing the strength that God has already given us when he created us. So use confidence to be your antidote for the fear that you have inside of you. And when you are confident, you will slay the very thing that was sent to destroy you. And not only will you slay the thing that was meant to destroy you from your being bold and stepping out and doing what God has told you to do and being who God has called you to be and that victory, something sweet will come from it. And not only will something sweet come from it where you can eat from it, but everybody who is attached to you will get something sweet from your victory, from your victory and your standing up and facing whatever it is that you are afraid of. I promise if you face whatever it is that you're afraid of, you will find that it's not going to be as bad as what you think. So step out on faith 
faith. Do not be afraid. Be bold. Be courageous. Be who God has called you to be. Be confident and face your fears. And out of facing your fears, you will slay the very things that are sent to destroy you. And when you do that, you will get something sweet and not something sweet just for you, but something sweet for everyone connected to you. I hope you have enjoyed my message today. I love y'all. I'm Grace Amber. Um, I will come back tomorrow with another message for you. Thank you for listening and I will see y'all soon.